Great. Well, hey, Nick, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. And again, Craig, congratulations on the, um, the new investment. And obviously, you got the attention of some smart people that wanted to help you grow. So, yeah, we're here to just kind of capture some of the story, the backstory about you and your, your business, how you started, you know, why you raise money now and what are you going to do with it? And, um, you know, with that, uh, if you wouldn't mind just maybe starting with a little elevator pitch on the company and a Twitter bio on yourself and yeah. introduce yourself and then we'll um, kind of get into a couple of Q&A things. Sounds great. Well, Ward, appreciate you having me and, and always been a fan of everything you've built and appreciate the relationship over the years. So just excited to, to be on the show and everybody excited to meet you and answer any questions as we go through it. So Nick Kermitis, co-founder and CEO of Hunt Club, started the business five or six years ago. And so what Hunt Club is, is it's we think of ourselves as a new category of search firms. So we really seamlessly blend technology, um, network effects and referrals and, and white glove service to help our customers get amazing talent. So really, you know, think of us a bit as search firm 2.0, um, you know, all of our homegrown technology to automate the things you can, augment the things you can't in a search process. And, um, and our big differentiator is we have a network of thousands of business leaders. So if we're helping Dollar Shave Club find their next VP of marketing, we have hundreds of marketers referring on your behalf and, and we run a process uh, alongside of that as a, as a talent partner. All right. And your background and um, what got you into this business? Well, my background's weird. So I was a women's tennis coach. Um, so I graduated in 2009, which was, yeah, it was like the, <laughs> the most optimal time to ever try and find a job. Um, and so my whole life was tennis before, before getting into tech entrepreneurship. And, um, and so did that in 09, sort of through a workaround, got a job as KPMG as a, ta or as a technology consultant. So I built my first software business and then convinced them I actually had business experience because of um, building a product and they gave me a job. And then um, started a venture studio called New Coast Ventures, where we invested in about 50 early stage businesses and incubated a couple of companies. And then, and then Hunt Club wait, was built out of that. So wait, when you said we started, was that you and KPMG or just on your own with some friends or? Yeah, on my own. I'd, I'd left KPMG. So worked really hard to get a job, my first business job, and then slowly realized I loved building software and building businesses and left mm. uh, after a few years and then and then had a couple of co-founders and partners where we kind of built our first sort of venture studio. And it was it was awesome and a lot of fun. Nice. And how did that parlay into Hunt Club then? Yeah, so I wasn't in the talent space, um, even though I'd argue anybody in business is in the talent space. And, True. and um, really came through just a couple different behaviors and, and sort of things that I noticed in market. So I had a great friend that was a partner at one of the larger exec search firms, and he kept winning these digital searches. So think of like VP of digital or VP of customer acquisition or roles that are primarily rooted in online. And, um, and I built a network in that space just through other things I built in other businesses. And so what he got really good at over, over a while is looking at who I was connected to on LinkedIn and asking for introduction to referrals. And, um, and then one summer I had placed five people for him. And, um, and I kept getting an email back from the folks that I'd introduced to him saying, Hey, I actually took that job that you sent me and I'm really excited about it. And I wouldn't have considered it had it not come from you and our relationship. So thank you. And and I'm looking forward to it. Um, and so that was kind of our initial aha moment. It's like, wow, if that's how the industry works, maybe there's a way that we can kind of explore building unique networks and, and drive some of the behaviors that I experienced in my own way. And I think kind of, we can come full circle on this, I think later in the financing, but, um, but as a consultant, I used to use a product called GLG all the time. And I'm yeah. not sure if everyone's familiar with that, but it's Gerson basically- Lehman? Like, you got it, Gerson Lehman. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and it's micro consulting and expert networks. And so you can basically get smart on a topic and pay a consultant an hour for their time. And, and um, you know, I really thought about, wow, if you can power external networks the way that my own experience was, um, apply technology and, and maybe you can build a better service model. Um, and so that was the initial idea. And we're fortunate in this round of funding, we got actually Thomas, who's the LNGLG to, to lead our round. And um, it's been a great partner so far. You say he is still with them or uh, alumni of GLG? Uh, he founded the business. He started something called Team Worthy Ventures since. Ah, nice. Okay. Got it. No, that's exciting. So um, I think the press release that um, we posted last week on our knowledge base and 
or talking about it live with the, the founder, uh, mentioned that um, your lead investor mentioned that um, they were a customer or using it, right? So firsthand experience is amazing, especially if they want to invest further. So how did that, you know, how did that happen? Was it like, did they come to you and say, let us help you fan the fires, you know, and grow this? Um, or did you reach out to them or you're already doing, you know, search for, and do you call this seed series A? What do you, you know, what, how did you end up uh, working with them versus yeah. somebody else? We were exploring capital at the time. Um, the business didn't need it, but we were interested in, in, in looking for a capital partner in the event that they could help us unlock the next level of growth and, and help us think about scaling the right way. And so the way that I came across them is one of our um, great friends and customers is a guy named Godard Abel who started a company called G2, if everyone's familiar. And so they're a marketplace mm -hmm. connecting software buyers. Um, Chicago, and, uh, right? Yeah, Chicago based. They've got a big San Francisco office and he's this incredible yeah. serial entrepreneur who started you know, three or four companies all been massively successful. And, and, um, and Godard's one of our biggest customers. And so we've added around over 50 people to his company over the years across different functions. And so I'd essentially had gotten an email from team where they saying, Hey, we're looking for introductions to these types of people for our portfolio. And I forwarded it to Godard. I'm like, they should be using Hunt Club more in their portfolio if this is how they actually operationalize getting talent to help their portfolio companies. And he's like, you're right. And so he forwarded my note to them. Um, and then we just started having a conversation and struck a great relationship and, and friendship. And just really through Thomas's experiences and Stephen on our boards, you know, experiences building high growth companies and seeing the needs for talent changing, um, you know, really we aligned on a great vision and, and really excited to be building the business with them. So it was, it was through one of our customers who is a portfolio company of theirs. Um, uh, and, um, okay. and then we're, you know, become a great friend since, but, um, but it was really, that's how we all got connected. Nice. So now that they were a customer directly or indirectly, and hopefully you're able to help their other portfolio companies yeah. now, do you give them a group rate or you know, how does that work? Always preferential treatment. Now, um, <laughs> you know, we try and be as helpful as we can in a lot of different ways, right? Whether it's consulting up front for the right partner. But I mean, I think one of the things we're trying to build at HC is how do we treat every customer the right way, not as a transaction in this space, but someone that we can truly be a partner to. So we certain, um, certainly have a different lens and scope when it's a team-worthy company, just given they're our lead investor, but um, we try and treat all our customers that way. Nice. Um, so any, any other investors today or others knocking on your door saying, how do we get into what's, uh, if you're allowed to feel comfortable saying, uh, on the right yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so we had raised from Team Worthy and a great syndicate of other entrepreneurs and founders who have built really big businesses in a wide variety of different industries and categories. You know, I think the future remains to be seen on if we'll capitalize the business more. Um, we've got a lot of large growth providers that are interested in having conversations. And I think the really interesting thing, Ward, is like we're at this period where, you know, talent's at a really critical point, right? Every single venture firm feels their portfolio struggling to make awesome hires. Um, you can now hire anybody in the country or the world for your jobs as we've, most of us have removed restrictions on virtual work, which means you know the best talent is anywhere. Um, the proliferation of private capital, right? There's more, we've invested more in private companies in 2021, nearly double, more than doubled what it was in 2019. So it's, so when with most people spend that money on hiring. So I think we're at a really interesting inflection point where there's a ton of great digital companies that have a ton of cash that are trying to grow and find great talent. And there's not that many unique solutions out there. And so, you know, going back to your question, investors feel that pain first and foremost. So I think some of them are starting to recognize we can be an innovation, innovative solution to help solve those problems, which is naturally making them a bit inquisitive on um, how our business works. So talk to us a little bit about the technology because this is um, running through our community platform, HR Tech Alliances, and that's our, our, our passion, our focus, but it typically good technology doesn't 
just flourish by itself. It needs people to help drive it and leverage it and certainly both the customer and, and the vendor providing it. So where did the tech come from? What is it doing today? And kind of where do you see it going? Yeah, yeah. So we built all of our homegrown platforms. So our engineering product and data team is close to 30 to 40 people now um, and growing. And so what we really focus on is solving a couple of things with our technology. So the first is really almost like the holy grail problem of search. How do you how do you target the right person, right? So we're Hydric and Egon and a lot of boutiques really leverage their own databases, LinkedIn, Boolean, um, mapping their own markets manually. We are trying to build and apply machine learning over the problem of how do you figure out the perfect person to target for a search um, and really using a lot of our proprietary data over the course of running you know, thousands of searches over the years and interacting with tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of candidates um, to drive sort of those models. So building something to power who's the perfect person to reach out to. And then I think taking it one step further and then really thinking through who's the perfect person then in our community to provide an introduction to them. And so Hunt Club is a bit of a two-sided marketplace where we have users, we call them experts who sign up, drop their networks in. Um, and then we're mapping those networks and really building really great technology to map the strength of those relationships so that right. when we're doing G2 search, we can target the perfect person automatically and then get the perfect person to introduce them. So instead of traditional cold outreach or maybe a message that um, without a relationship, we can actually access a candidate you know, using a trust and introduction. So really building technology to power a referral experience, whether it's ingesting someone's network and building strength of relationship scores to building our own version of a referral job board and dashboard, um, all those different mechanisms. And then I think the final piece is really along the recruiting journey of how do you automate parts of the process, messaging, scheduling, helping build better tools for candidate reports, all the things that if you, you know, benchmark a, a traditional firm takes tons of manpower and, and tons of hours um, and takes away providing an awesome customer and candidate experience. We're trying to really figure out how do we automate some of that stuff so our people can focus on clients and candidates. Nice. Well, and that's focusing on clients and candidates is, is great. So, I mean, isn't that with a lot of the larger you know, contingent or even retainer staffing firms are doing using technology, what makes you different and, and how much of it does your clients and candidates actually touch on the tech side or is it all through your team? Yeah, so I think there's a couple fundamental differences between Hunt Club and most traditional staffing and or, you know, external contingency agencies and or executive search firms. So the first is we think recruiting should be more of a team sport. So if you look at the most of the traditional executive search or retain space, they run very much partner models. Partners are elbows up and guarded about their network. Partners are not accessing and giving their network to other partners. Um, and they run their own little fiefdom where they're trying to generate their own P&L and their own billing cycle. And so what Hunt Club really does is we're creating a team sport. So we decouple a network from one partner to being an asset of the company, um, which is what really allows us to access better talent through trusted introductions in a way that most firms you know, can or don't based on how their operating models work. Um, so I think that's a huge differentiator is really the network and how we enable the network for our recruiters and our team, our talent team, um, which is quite different than the marketplace. And I think the second thing, Ward, is like, if you look at... Um, most of these larger retained firms or traditional search firms, most of them aren't really investing in that much technology. Like they're using a Salesforce backbone. They're using a platform core called the orchestra. Um, they're doing things that maybe are starting to push the ball a little bit forward, but I would argue it's somewhere between 10 to 15 years behind traditional HR tech and what internal teams are using. Um, and so, you know, I think there's a huge amount of improvement um, just in the external talent provider space that we can offer to help around automation and augmentation. And, and I think they're starting to um, adopt some of it, but given how their business models and operating models are set up in traditional partner models, um, the incentives just aren't there to, to adopt things or do anything differently. Uh, thanks for that. Speaking of partners uh, one of the questions posted i'll rephrase it par paraphrase it slightly uh especially now that you have this inf infusion of capital do you build by your partner to grow your business 
from here? Yeah. Um, I think a little bit of all three. Uh, so I think I think organically, you know, what we're doing is 80% of our talent team has never worked in recruiting. Um, so we're training great folks outside of different industries with different specializations to come partner with our customers. And so I think we've proven that model can work. That team will grow to 150 to 200 people next year on our talent team. Um, we'll look for like-minded groups that we feel like can be leverage our software to be more efficient and our network effects to drive better value to their customers to expand. And then I think we'll be opportunistic on other other pieces of software or other business models that make sense for our customers that we're not currently offering to, um, to them today. And so I think it's, you know, I think over the next couple of years, it'll be a little bit of it of all three continuing to grow organically, looking at a couple of things here and there inorganically that either either increase our footprint or um, allow us to offer something to customers that we're currently not doing. Sounds like a good plan. Um, I've seen a lot of referral based type platforms out there. Uh, I was helping Bullhorn launch theirs for about six months before they had to shut it down. And that's a different story there, but Vettery, it comes to mind, you know, Reflick, a number of these tools, and some are designed to kind of be self-service, like more portal-based, and it sounds like yours is more hands-on for your team, at least now. Just curious if you bumped into those in the past, or is, are they still, is there, you know, kind of benchmarks that you look at, or other groups that um, you feel are kind of in your space? I mean, it sounds pretty unique, but then Maybe not. I don't know. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I think you're right. It is unique in some ways. It's definitely not in so many others. I think what we what we believe in at Hunt Club is that, so think about less about the digital or the online space. Think about the manual behavior that all the best recruiters do. They curate networks, cultivate networks, mm -hmm. and then ask those networks manually for introductions, either for business development or for access to candidates. And so you know, what we believe in is that by building software to power that process, we can do it at scale um, by, you know, introducing a couple of different unique ways that we do it. But we don't think that software in itself purely solves the problem. And so I think, you know, our vision for Hunt Club is building really search firm 2.0, um, playing into all the manual behaviors that have already worked, that have created, you know, multi-billion dollar companies and just, and just building technology and applying it around those those different behaviors. Um, and I think part of the challenge is when, when you just have a purely referral marketplace or just software and not necessarily, you know, someone great behind the wheel driving that software, it can break down. And I think all of us are probably feeling that in this talent environment, right? Where if you can use software to generate four great referrals for a role and it's sent directly to a hiring manager, if that hiring manager has six other responsibilities and doesn't jump on them, those folks may have jobs in 30 days, different jobs in 30 days. And so, we think, um, we think the intersection of software, service, and referrals is the key to kind of, kind of unlocking change. And we don't think it works without, um, without any of those three pieces. They have to be kind of combined together. And I think that's, that's one of our big differentiators is really the services component using software and referrals. So the services component in the traditional sense, there's a percentage of the first year salary or something like that. I mean, is that your model? How do your fees work? I mean, if somebody wants to engage Hunt Club, yeah, it's gonna, you know, what's the investment look like for them? We do a start fee and a success fee. So for executive search, we charge 10% of base plus bonus up front and a 15% success fee once we actually place the role. Um, and then for non-executive, it's usually 10% up front and a 10% success fee. So we play in to some more of the similar business models. Um, you know, we obviously have customers that are doing hundreds of roles with us for so there are some enterprise volume breaks and, and other, you know, unique enterprise models that are more subscription based. Um, but we're really playing into a model that most of our customers know how to consume and, and um, it's something we're excited about continuing to do. So what's the plans next? I mean, uh, have you spent the 10 million yet? And uh, what do you, <laughs> what do you, if yeah. not, what are you going to, what are you going to be using? It? <laughs> yeah, it's all gone. I mean, I, I'm yeah, a I Sorry, I'm I missed that dad. party. Now my, <laughs> you know, my daughter loves Paw Patrol and, and Mickey Mouse. So we're just going to Disneyland and just splurging. Okay. No, nice. um, no, I mean, we're 
so coming from the other side and investing for many years and watching, I think, some of the behaviors of, of portfolio founders thinking once you have capital, you should just go deploy it immediately. Um, we're, we're certainly doing that um, in areas that we know have proven ROI in areas that we're making ambitious bets in. But, but we're planning to be really stewards of our financial sponsors and making sure when we deploy capital on bets or risks, we have a measured idea of growth and, and continue to double and triple down. So we'll grow the team from you know, 130 or 40 people this year to around 250 to 300 next year, um, make some bets on you know, expanding into new markets, make some innovative bets in how we're unlocking machine learning and data science to automate some of the things we discussed. And then, um, and then grow our core business um, so we can continue to service customers. Well, I didn't hear AI in there, but machine learning is kind of in that family, right? So kudos to you and um, for slipping it in. But that sounds like a great plan in terms of, um, I guess, preparing for the next phase, perhaps, um, and scaling it. And I guess from a build standpoint, uh, tying into the ecosystem, obviously most employers have an ATS or you know, CRM or probably some have dozens of talent acquisition type technology in-house. How do you fit into that? Does it matter? Is it really very white glove kind of premium service that you spoon feed them candidates you know, traditional way or is there more of a technology play that's going to help you integrate into the ecosystem? Yeah, in today's world, our customers interact us with our own dashboards and in our own kind of candidate reports, depending on how they want to consume our service or consume the candidates we're presenting. Um, next year, tomorrow, it's really about building a more holistic platform where we can really integrate with ATS systems, work with our customers potentially um, in an employer model where we're actually you know, rolling out a different type of product or service to generate referrals for them in, in unique ways using their own sort of candidate database and, um, and our greater expert network. So there's a lot of really stuff that we're interesting stuff that we're going into in the future for next year. So I'd say right now, um, not a lot of integrations we can do with larger employers um, or other products. Uh, but in the near future, lots of ways that I think we can partner with the ecosystem to help you know, their customers find, find great talent and great referrals. And we've got some awesome ideas in, in sort of the roadmap right now. All right, sounds good. Uh, any questions from the floor? I see a few were put into the chat, but um, anybody wanna jump in with a ask for Nick here? I want need to know basis. All right, Nick, I'm Lloyd Fassett from Oregon. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, do you guys use um, job boards uh, or uh, create uh, job pages at all? Yeah, so we have a job board experience, Lloyd, on our platform where our community of 12,000 business leaders can sign up, refer people directly. So as they have that kind of coffee, breakfast, drink, dinner, lunch, and are networking with their community, um, they can sign up and refer directly. Um, that's the primary use case on how we leverage job boards at Hunt Club. You know, occasionally it, on our customers' requests, they'll want us to run an omni-channel experience. So they'll want us to post it as well as use our report. Um, but most of the way that we use a job board is in our own platform. So are, are you finding any uh, quality candidates through posting jobs or nothing? No, not really. Um, <laughs> like if you look at the hit rate relative to... Um, you know, traditional referral based outreach, um, trust introductions, and other approaches, we find it in this environment, especially where you know, the job openings are plenty, the can't apply supplies in a huge deficit that like you have to engage in more passive tactics versus um, expecting inbound to be that effective. All right, thanks for the questions, Lloyd. Uh, Nick, in terms of like G2, for example, People use it sometimes as like a glass doorish type of approach, right? Check out customers, companies. I mean, are, are you looking to roll in anything that um, when it gets out to your referral network, it might be somebody they know well, maybe not so well. Just wondering if, if there's any kind of qualitative referral or part of that referral process um, or d does the, the, the customer that's consuming this, these applicants you send or candidates, 
do they even know the the source necessarily at this yeah. point? Yeah, in some instances, they'll know the source. We give the opportunity for our expert network and our, our referral base to, to qualify that they're the referrer on a search if they want to. In other ways, we let them be anonymous for any sort of purpose to stay they might want to. Um, so we, we put that option in the hands of our users. Um, and as far as mapping, you know, if someone's connected to their customer, we generally try and use that in our algorithm. So we use heuristic algorithms to really understand who's in the company's network um, so that we're connecting the dots and someone that might be have a credible kind of reference point in the business already, just because it makes for a smoother process with a higher um, success rate. But I think the, the counter to that would be, you know, sometimes in what we believe we're building is one of the best networks to power diverse hiring. So if you're using networks that have no affiliation with the company, um, sometimes you get access to incredible talent that's got a totally different background, vantage point, experience set. And I think that's a, that's a huge part what Hunt Club drives is, is we'll help you find people you don't know that are referred by great business leaders and build a process to qualify them so they're a fit for your company. It definitely makes a good point for external networks compared to the traditional employee referral program because... Uh, yeah, it, you tend to get referrals from people that look like the employee and that doesn't necessarily satisfy diversity initiatives. So that definitely is uh, a positive for the way you've um, enhanced it. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, I think we're kind of out of time in terms of the original half hour, but I could probably ask 20 more questions. Somebody did pop in a question here on the chat about, uh, do you manage the whole process of, you know, background checks and education checks, reference? I mean, do you do that whole thing as part of your process or is that a la carte? How do you? Yeah, yeah. So it's funny. We're, we're actually in the process of thinking through integrating that into our, um, into our actual product. So if someone's at Credify, they should reach out um, and, and see if there's something we should do. I think it's Naveen because it's it's a huge part, right, with all the different social proofing of someone's experience and making sure people are validating trust online and the future of that. It's a big part of um, making sure that we can be successful for our customers. So we do do that today. Um, we usually use our most of our customers at this point have systems they like us to to leverage, um, right. but many don't. And in those instances, we use a la carte tools. So so always interested in um, integrating that to our service offering. Fantastic. Well, any other um, closing comments or uh, from you, Nick? And or do you have an ask for the group? Maybe you thinking about something you want to poll the uh, the group uh, for your ideas. I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think mean, for starters, just thanks for having me. It's fun being with you, Ward. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm you know I'd, down the road, I'd love to talk with the group or maybe share more ideas on how we're thinking about building or bringing our software to the employer market and, and giving some, some access to the expert network as well to help expand a company's network. Um, so it'd be, be, be definitely be an idea that I'd be interested in packing with this group, just given all the expertise and experience. So, you know, today, a little bit early because um, most of what we're doing is still a service model. Um, using our product in our network, but down the road, if the group's open to it, would love to figure out ways to, to, to see if how we do that and, and how to do that best given the, just the group knowledge here. Yeah, delighted, love to have you back. And um, it's really been a pleasure, Nick. Congrats to you and your team on you. not just the raise, but just this growing this business model and, uh, and not for blowing it all in Disney World. <laughs> Not yet. That's the investment. Yeah. Chicago gets a bit cold this time of year, so we're saving them blowing it all first quarter of next year. Oh, perfect. So get, get out of the winter. Yeah. Yeah. Good planning. Good. Excellent. Well, um, with that, you're welcome to stay on, and uh, we're just going to kind of walk through some of the latest news that's been upvoted by the community and cool. help people try to stay in touch with, you know, what what's coming and going. There's a lot of news this week. I think we've got over 20 items, but luckily they've been upvoted. So we're going to kind of dive into that. And uh, yeah, we'd love to learn more. I'll stick around if it's okay. Yeah, with that, as long as me... you're taking off the hot seat, I'll stick around. 